when you're setting up a new system, extension registration failure can be bothering and interrupting. Today, we'll give you a guidebook on how to solve extension registration failure. This guide applies to the local extension, cross-segment network extension, and remote extension. Generally speaking, there are three common reasons for the problem. Number one, incorrect extension registration information and incorrect extension settings. Number two, Unreachable network for SIP clients and PBX. Number three, unavailable SIP port for wording for remote extension mostly. Well, let's start with the extension registration information. If any of the parameters are filled incorrectly, PBX could not receive or accept the SIP packets from the SIP endpoints. Here we take the IP phone and PBX side by side to see if the following vital parameters match with each other. Server host, register name, username, password, and transport. Suppose we're registering a remote extension, deploying the branch office, for instance. In server host information, we're supposed to put in the static public IP address with forwarded SIP service port instead of local IP address as URL. And for a remote extension or extension on another network segment of the same LAN, we must check the NAT and register remotely option on advanced settings of the extension page. Otherwise, the PBX will not allow the IP phone to register. Another possibility that we must take into consideration is that our extension security mechanism blocks the register. So, you can scroll down on this page. There you will see two options we designed to secure our system from being hacked through SIP extension. They are user agent and IP restriction. In user agent, we usually put in IP phone brand. So only the corresponding brand can register to our PBX as a SIP extension. Of course, we can put in multiple brands if there's our case. So it is vital that we put in the correct brand name in the field. Otherwise, the registration will be denied by the PBX. On the other hand, IP restriction will limit extension access exclusively to devices with a matched IP address. So if the IP address limitation we set here doesn't match the actual network environment, will we have a problem registering to this extension? Of course, it's not technically obligatory to check these two options. So if you're 100% sure that your system is secured, you can uncheck them. If all extension settings are cracked, we need to move on and check the network accessibility. First, we must guarantee that all Ethernet cable is in functional status and has been correctly connected. To reassure, we can check the phone screen to see if there's a network error displayed or run a pain test on IP phone and PBX. If the result comes out negatively, we're supposed to check the network settings of the phone and PBX, including an IP address gateway, network mask, and DNS setting for the remote extension. The majority of the issue is caused by incorrect network settings here. But if we find out that all parameters are correct, then we need to check on the router to see if the dysfunction happened on a more fundamental level. In this case, we will have to contact router supplier for the troubleshooting. All right, if we're dealing with remote extensions on another branch office, we also need to investigate if the issue is caused by incorrect port forwarding. Please make sure remote phones can be registered SIP UDP 5060 and SIP RTP 10000 to 12000 must be mapped out. If any of these ports are missed, the remote extension will not work properly. And also, as the port forwarding is done on the router, we will need to check the router user guide to see how do we configure it on the device that we have? In the meanwhile, for the remote extension, it's necessary to make sure the SIP NAT settings have been configured correctly on the PBX. Please check this video to see how to set NAT correctly on our PBX. By the way, the registration can also be blocked by the embedded firewall of S-Series PBX. In this case, we can take a look at this video in which we have covered firewall working mechanism and configuration methods.
All right, guys. Guess that was all we have for this one. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Get more details about troubleshooting. Check our knowledge base. Get more information about system configuration. Please visit our document center, and I will see you guys in the next one.